Russian state TV released footage Saturday of what they said were Russian sappers searching for and detonating mines in the Kursk region. According to the video story the sappers worked on the territory from where Ukrainian forces have retreated. In Russia, air defense brought down 17 Ukrainian drones over four regions near the border, the defense ministry in Moscow reported Saturday. Also according to the Russian Defense Ministry, Moscow's troops have continued eking out battlefield gains in Ukraine's industrial east, capturing the hamlet of Oleksandropil in the Donetsk region. Russia has been conducting a ferocious months-long campaign along the eastern front in Ukraine, gradually compelling Kiev to surrender ground, but Russian forces have struggled to push Ukrainian forces out of its Kursk border region, following an incursion almost three months ago. Чаще всего это кассетные боеприпасы, типа ПФН, типа колокольчик. Ну, желательно ликвидировать такие боеприпасы на месте, но его возможно и обезвредить. Чаще всего они без самоликвидатора лежат на замаскированной в траве. Смотри, вот вчера в середине мы там все прошли. Основная задача наша – это обезопасить освобожденные территории как бы для мирного населения. То есть мы идем, да, мы следуем, мы идем следом за штурмовыми подразделениями, обезрежем те, те подарки, те сюрпризы, которые нам оставил враг. Это ямку ложит мину ловушку. Также ее взводит и на и на эту мину ловушку накладывается еще одна э, мина. В случае, если поднять эту поменку, грубо говоря, то сработает мину ловушку и получается двойной заряд. Ну, то есть двойной ущерб, двойной вещь человеку. Поэтому все мины уничтожаются на месте накладным зарядом. Russian forces have advanced over a key waterway in the eastern Ukrainian stronghold of Chasivya, a Ukrainian military official said, marking a setback for Kyiv's embattled forces. The town of Chasivya, which had an estimated pre-war population of around 12,000 people, sits on a strategic hilltop and its capture would likely speed Russian advances deeper in the war-battered Donetsk region. The enemy managed to break into our line of defense, but there is no critical failure and we are not about to lose Chasivya. Fierce fighting continues now, a spokesman for Ukraine's 24th Brigade told state-run media. The spokesman Ivan Petrichak said that while Russian troops had crossed the canal on the eastern edge of the city, Ukrainian troops were containing the advance. Experts say that Chasivya is a new Bakhmut, for Russians, nearly 20,000 Russian mercenaries died fighting for Wagner Group, for the Wagner Group during the Battle of Bakhmut. Using the identification numbers of those killed, journalists were also able to determine that at least 48,000 prisoners fought for Wagner during this time. Dmitro Snyhiryov, a Ukrainian military expert, says that Chasivya is a hard target for Russians. He recalled that over the year of the Russian offensive in the Donetsk region, the Russian army has advanced 900 square kilometers. Currently, the Russians are solving the issue of reaching the administrative borders of the, of the Donetsk region, and they have been unsuccessfully solving it for a year of the Russian offensive. Let me remind you that the offensive has been going on since October 2023, not since May 2024. So the maximum advance of the Russians during the year of the Russian offensive is the corresponding preconditions for tactical success, a larger number of personnel, total enemy air superiority, and most importantly, the firepower coefficient, which, unfortunately, is in favor of the occupiers. So despite all these factors, as well as the corresponding delay in military and technical assistance from our partners, 
the maximum advance of the Russians is 900 square kilometers in the Donetsk region. The issue of getting to the borders of Donetsk region has not been resolved. He spoke about this on Espresso TV. Snehiryov believes that it will be difficult for Russian troops to advance. The Russians have quite serious defense lines of the Ukrainian defense forces ahead. We are talking about the Pokrovsk agglomeration, respectively the Slovyansk and Kramatorsk agglomerations, which are large industrial cities. And even though the Russians are currently using flanking tactics and the so-called small cauldron tactics, meaning that they are not engaging in assault operations directly in urban areas, we can say that further Russian advance in these industrial cities will take a rather serious period of time. Unless, again, there is an unclear nature of the rotations of the Ukrainian personnel, which, by a strange coincidence, will become known to the Russian occupiers. Unfortunately, a similar situation occurred during the battles for Avdiivka, Volodar, and other problematic areas of the front, which led to the Russian tactical successes. He emphasized. The North Korean invasion of sovereign Ukrainian territory is a red line for Washington. The White House should consider direct military action against North Korean units if they take part in Russia's war against Ukraine. Congressman Mike Turner, who heads the House Intelligence Committee, made this call to the American administration. The Hill reports. In turn, White House National Security Representative John Kirby reported that in the first two weeks of this month, Pyongyang sent at least 3,000 of its troops to Russia. The transfer was carried out by sea from the North Korean region of Wonsan to Vladivostok. The soldiers moved this month and are being trained at multiple Russian military bases. Kirby said, They are fair targets, and the Ukrainian military will defend themselves against North Korean soldiers the same way they're defending themselves against Russian soldiers. He said, there could be dead and wounded North Korean soldiers fighting against Ukraine. The US presidential administration believes that the entry of North Korean troops into the war against Ukraine will be a sign of the Kremlin's growing desperation. According to Kirby, the Ukrainian armed forces will defend themselves against the North Korean military in the same way they defend themselves against the Russian army. His comments, were the first detailed assessment Washington has offered after its allies grew frustrated by sounding the alarm for days with their own intelligence. Still, integrating the two militaries will not be easy, and it is likely to be complicated by their different languages, experts say, though the prospect of North Korea's inexperienced military bringing back critical battleground experience has worried officials in Seoul. North Korea's dispatch of the troops to Russia is a provocation that is threatening the security of the Korean Peninsula, South Korean President Yoon suk yeol said. North Korea will not stand by and do nothing, his office said in a statement. The US and other countries say North Korea has already provided critical munitions, including millions of artillery shells, to Russia in possible exchange for key military technology that Pyongyang could use to advance its nuclear ambitions.